Flip phones are by far my favorite genre of smartphones. Even as a child, I loved, loved using them. The keypad ones, of course. And today I have this, the Infinix Zero Flip, which is the cheapest flip phone out in the market right now, starting at just 50,000 rupees or some $600, which is like 80% cheaper than my Z Flip 6. Right after unboxing and using it for a couple of hours, I am instantly impressed by how Infinix has done a very good job on the design. The rounded corners and the soft satin back feel nice to hold in my hands. And for the price, the build quality is pretty good too. Uh, you get a glass back and a cover screen which is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 2 and the frames here are made of aluminum. I have to tell you, it is slightly heavier than the Z Flip 6 because of its larger battery, but it's not uncomfortable to hold at all, so that is not a problem. But how about the hinge then? Infinix says that this phone has been tested to withstand 400,000 folds, which means on average, even if you fold and unfold this phone around like 200 times a day, you are good to go for more 4 to 5 years. And yes, this is more than what Samsung claims with the Z Flip 6. However, what Samsung nails is the sturdiness of its hinge. It just feels more rigid and robust and even after all this time, it has not loosened at all. On the other hand, the Zero Flip's hinge is not as sturdy. I have noticed a little creaking sound every time I open and close it and this actually has made me a little paranoid. I often do this all the time. Anyway, Infinix says that it has the biggest cover screen in its price segment and technically it does if you consider the size but usability wise, the right hand portion is actually reserved for notifications so you only get a limited screen space for actual app usage. Good thing is that you can use almost all of the apps on the cover screen itself which is something you still cannot do with Samsung. I mostly find using Google Maps or scrolling through Instagram or playing light games quite convenient here. I also checked if I can play PUBG or Call of Duty like the Motor Racer here but unfortunately you cannot do that. This cover screen is quite bright too, uh, well not as bright as Samsung's but visibility has never been a problem for me on the Zero Flip so I will not complain. Unfolding this phone takes you to a large 6.9 inch display and let me tell you, Infinix has somehow managed to make the crease a little less visible and slightly less intrusive to touch than Samsung and this is their first ever flip phone, okay? So Samsung really, really needs to step up their game. The actual quality of this screen is nice too with punchy color reproduction and sufficient brightness at least in indoor conditions. During sunny outdoor situations, let's just say it's not the brightest. This is also an LTPO screen so it can go from 10 to 120 hertz to save battery. Uh, there are not a lot of instances when the phone reaches 10 hertz, mostly it hovers around 60, 90 and 120 hertz. Uh, but other than that, this screen is good for watching content, scrolling through social media apps and all of that. There is only one thing that Infinix can improve, which is app continuity. So when you're using any app on the cover screen and you need to unfold the device, it takes a second for the phone to process that, whereas on the Z Flip 6, that is not a problem. The stereo speakers here are quite nice though. Uh, it can get a little shouty at 90 to 100% volume, but keeping it at around 70 to 80%, they sound quite nice. But I can't say the same about the haptics as they feel a little buzzy and not as crisp when typing or navigating through the phone. Uh, in Phoenix, definitely should have provided a better vibration motor here. Now, talking about cutting corners, Infinix has only promised two years of OS updates here. Currently, this phone is running on Android 14, so the max update you will get on this phone is only till Android 16. Although I am happy that Infinix has improved the XOS skin quite well in the last few years. Uh, first of all, there are little to no bloatware apps here and the overall system animation is also quite swift. Moving on, we get the Diamond City 8020 chip with 8GB RAM which is much better than the Diamond City 7300 on the Moto Razr 50. Um, if I have to explain, the Diamond City 8020 performs somewhat similar to the Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 which means normally the phone can handle everyday tasks and a little bit of multitasking pretty well. Its gaming capabilities are quite average though. The max you can play is games like PUBG at 55 to 60 FPS with good enough stability but this phone cannot handle games like Genshin Impact in high settings very well. 
Uh, also, as with most flip phones, this one also heats up pretty badly while playing games for longer duration. Okay, let's talk about the cameras now. And honestly, I was not expecting the camera on this phone to be good at all, but Infinix has actually surprised me. I would go as far as to say that the cameras on the Infinix Zero Flip are better than the Moto Razr 50. On the back, you get dual 50 megapixel sensors, a primary and an ultra wide angle unit. And on the front here is a 50 megapixel camera as well. And comparing it against the more expensive Z Flip 6, I am happy to report that Infinix puts up quite the competition in the photography aspect. The Infinix Zero Flip brings out sharp, detailed images with punchy colors. The flower or foliage images look especially good. They're very striking. After taking about a hundred pictures or so, the only thing that Infinix needs to improve on is number one, maintaining the white balance consistently and number two, dynamic range takes quite a hit in challenging conditions from the Zero Flip. But besides that, for general usage, the primary camera here is quite good, I would say. Even the ultra-wide images are not bad and surprisingly, there is very less color shift from the primary and the ultra-wide angle lens, which is quite impressive. Even Samsung cannot do that sometimes. And I don't know how, but during nighttime, the ultra-wide images are actually cleaner and noise-free from Infinix in comparison to Samsung. Normal nighttime photos also have very similar detail levels from both the phones, but in the night mode, Infinix tends to overdo things a little. And because of its weaker chipset, it also takes slightly more time to process night mode images than Samsung. The only thing Infinix cannot handle well is human subjects. Uh, it tries to pull out a lot of texture on the subject's face and the skin tone as well as the shadow processing is a little off too. Uh, Samsung does a much better job when it comes to clicking human pictures. Even the selfies, be it from the front or the rear cameras, have better skin tone and exposure handling than what I am getting with Infinix. When it comes to videos, the Infinix Zero Flip lets you shoot up to 4K 30fps from the rear camera and up to 4K 60fps from the front. Infinix also provides some built-in filters for videos which my team had a lot of fun shooting with. The actual quality of the videos is um, nothing to write home about though. The videos are sharp but the smoothness and stabilization in movement are kind of missing here. Additionally, you also get a couple of AI features like object eraser, sketch to image, etc. here too. Uh, it's nothing new, so let's skip this and talk about the battery life. Here we get a big 4720 mAh battery and its battery life is decent enough for a flip phone. On a full charge, the phone would last me until 7 to 8 p.m. in the evening before I had to plug it in. However, I wouldn't say I got better battery life here in comparison to the Z Flip 6. The battery optimization on Infinix is not as aggressive and I faced around 3 to 4% battery drain while the phone was kept idle too. Charging this phone is pretty fast though. You get a 70 watt charger inside the box with which you can take the phone from 0 to 100% in less than an hour. So overall, if you ask me how my experience was using a cheap flip phone, I would say not bad. Um, to match the price point, Infinix definitely has made compromises in things like there is no IP rating, you're getting a pretty average processor, inferior videography department, and the software commitment is kind of weak. But the phone is also available for a much, much affordable price. So if you're someone who's fascinated by flip phones and their form factor, but don't want to spend a hefty price, it's actually not a bad idea getting the Infinix Zero Flip. This phone actually nails all the basics, like your getting a nice sturdy design, good display, reliable cameras, battery life and the software is also optimized for the flip form factor. But do look out for deals during sales. Uh, you should get it for less than 40,000 Indian rupees and for that price, it's going to be an absolute steal if you love flip phones as much as I do. All right, everybody, that was all for my full review of the all new Infinix Zero Flip. What do you think about this device? Do let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Saying this, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.